Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today I've got a really fun inverted Z fold card for you. Now when you hear that and when you see it, there's lots of different like steps up and down. It may look complicated, it may sound complicated, but I promise this card is not hard to make. In fact, I've got a PDF that's got all of your uh, cut and score lines. There's only two cut lines and then a couple score lines. Um, it's very simple and we're gonna walk through this together. This video and uh, my card itself is actually inspired by my friend Janie. Uh, Janie is celebrating 20,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel. It's Janie the Craft Princess, so make sure you're following her. Um, we're celebrating with a hop and she asked us to create a project that was inspired by one of the videos on her channel. And one of my favorite videos on her channel is her inverted Z fold card. She creates it in a portrait format and I went ahead and I took it and created it in landscape. So I just kind of modified it there. Um, I've got links to the original that uh, PDF there that she has for you. So you can print it out the other way. And then I've got a link here for this one as well. So you can see those, those yellow boxes there are the, the shadow box area. That's the, um, the highlighted focal point area of the card. And you can adjust those. Um, once you start playing with this, you'll, you'll, be able to tell how easy it is to kind of move your lines around depending on what kind of shadow box area you want to create. But I promise this is easy and you've got step-by-step -step instructions here. So let's go ahead and take a look at the parts that I'm using for the card. I've got a piece of pattern paper. It's actually patterned cardstock there. That's 11 by four and a quarter inches. I've got a little white rectangle that's going to have my sentiment on the um, inside of the card. And then to decorate the card itself, I'm using the new Butterfly Burst from iCrafter. These are really cool dies. I'm, I just really love this burst technology that Linda has created. So you get the outline piece, which creates the shadow. I cut out two of those. And then you can slip in the little um, detail part, and that will allow you to create the, uh, the detail layer on top. Um, and there's a bunch of different ways you can use that. This is just one way. Um, now in the die set, you also get a couple individual butterflies. So I went ahead and I cut out the small one, both a shadow and then the shadow with the detail dropped in so that I can have a separate butterfly. And then the uh, die set also comes with the bodies. So I knew I wanted those to be black, but I didn't, I was being lazy. I didn't want to go ahead and dig out my black cardstock. Um, so I just took a Sharpie to a scrap of the paper that I was already cutting the rest out of and marked it up real quick before I cut those out. Now for my sentiments, I'm using the set from Create and Inspire. This was the uh, part of the July card kit that came out. Um, and I believe there are still a few left. So if you don't have that yet, you might want to grab one. Now, whenever you're making a new paper engineering project, the first thing I always recommend doing is just making a sample out of just scrap cardstock, or in this case, I grabbed a piece of paper out of the recycle bin <laughs> um, and tested it out and it works. Um, but I always recommend testing it first. So I discovered that the easiest way to make our cut lines, um, and you can see from the PDF there, that you've got two vertical cut lines. The easiest way to do that is to mark the four points with a pencil in the ruler. So basically your start and stop points. And they are three quarters of an inch from either side and then three quarters of an inch in from the left side. And then our stop points will be at six and a quarter inches if you're gonna use the same measurements here. And again, all of those measurements are on that PDF, which you can just download and print out. In fact, if you want, you can download that and print out that, that PDF there and then just cut and score on there so you can get a really good feel for exactly where those cut lines are and the score lines. So once I've got those four points marked out, I'm gonna go ahead and stick this in my trimmer. Now I have a rotary trimmer. That means it has the little round blade that rolls around instead of the, um, the little pointy kind of trimmer. If you have that, that would actually work better because you can control exactly where you start and stop. But I'm just gonna use my craft knife to make sure that I don't go beyond those points. Um, so I use the rotary blade to cut most of the line. And then I just took that little craft knife and made sure that I got right up to that point because I do want to kind of be pretty exact there. Otherwise it could tear if you're off in one direction or another. So now I've got my two cut lines. I'm just going to erase my four pencil marks 
easy peasy. You guys are with me so far, right? Um, again, you can adjust these um, or use the measurements that I've got on that PDF there. So now we want to add our score lines. And Janie had a great idea. She actually used her trimmer and a bone folder to score right inside her trimmer. Um, using the score pal is a little tricky if you don't have a ruler because it, we're not scoring from top to bottom with all of these. Um, and you can see on the diagram there, we're scoring between the two cut lines for the first two marks. And that's at three quarters of an inch and half an inch, or I'm sorry, one and a half inches there. And then the next set of score lines, we're actually scoring above and below the cut lines. And then we've got one more score line that connects the two um, cut lines at six and a quarter inches, but it's again right between the two cut lines there. And then this last score line um, is actually top to bottom at eight and a quarter inches there. So now you can see, it's a little easier to see on the back side, um, our score lines are in place. And on the diagram, you can see M's and V's. The M's are for mountain folds, the V's are for valley. And I'm just gonna kind of follow my little diagram there and go back and forth. Um, mountain fold, you kind of fold away from you. And valley fold, you fold up towards you so that you create a V. And as I'm going, I'm just gonna kind of make sure that I'm making everything square. And I wanna make sure that those two points that stick out um, line up with the end of the card, the, the far right side of the card. And I'll just kind of hold them in place with my fingers to get them exactly square. And then I can come back in with my bone folder and reinforce those um, folds and make sure that everything lines up nicely. But see how easy that was? You can totally do this, it's not hard. Um, so now it's just a matter of creating the decorative pieces to, to finish up our card. For the butterfly bursts, I decided that I wanted color underneath the decorative pieces. I thought that would be really pretty. So on the shadow layer, I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of use my pencil to um, sort of map out those little areas just so that I can color them and so I don't actually get, you know, one color going into the, the next butterfly. Um, and then I'm gonna grab my Kareen markers and do you like that little bag that they're in? This is a brand new Pear Blossom Press exclusive item. Um, I actually made this with Kathy Rakusin. Those are her top 10 coloring tips on there. And the bag just kind of collapses down while you're using it and then it pops back up and zips up. So I think these are a lot of fun and, and really handy. I am just going to go through and pull out a couple different markers. I haven't swatched these yet. I really need to, <laughs> um, but I, I just have been having fun playing with them and I haven't swatched them. So I am very quickly and without any finesse adding color to the shadow layer uh, for each of the butterflies. And I'm just speeding through this here. Um, again, no, I'm not even worrying about getting a, a smooth, solid coating there because so much of it will be covered by the detail layer. And once you have um, the pieces sitting on top, all of the streaky lines disappear. Um, but I did decide that I wanted a little bit uh, of a shadow, more depth in the center of the butterflies. So I just grabbed some markers um, in colors that are slightly darker and kind of flicked out from the center for each of the butterflies. And for that deep dark purple butterfly to get a, a good color that would not be way too dark, um, I used an olive green, a dark olive green. It actually worked really well. For the rest of the colors, I just kind of grabbed a, a slightly darker um, color in the same family. And once I did those, um, I'll just put my markers away, see how it zips up. <laughs> um, these are fun bags. Um, once I've got those, I'm going to look at the back and I wasn't sure how much color would bleed through. That's why I went ahead and I cut the second shadow piece. If there was a lot of bleed through, I was going to layer those up together and then just kind of glue that on the back. But since I don't need it, I'll tuck it into my pocket uh, with my dies and then save it for next time. Um, and now I'm just going to go ahead and grab 
the wings for each butterfly and just kind of pop them up. I love how much detail you get from just one die. That's all one piece right there. You can just glue that down and have a really awesome 3D effect with just one simple die. Um, but I'm gonna layer them onto my color for a little shadow. So I am adding glue all the way around the outside edges of the butterflies and then also up through the center of each butterfly body. I'll just do that real quick here. And then those locking tweezers really make it easy to keep your fingers out of the glue, um, especially when you have little uh, small areas like the edges of those dies there. So I went ahead and stuck those down to the shadow piece or that down to the shadow piece. It's really only two pieces here. It, it's really a cool die for only being two pieces, right? Um, so I went ahead, smashed it down, and then of course I'll have to pull the uh, wings back up just in case any glue seeps out. I really do like wet glue for this because wet glue allows you to have some wiggle room, make sure you get everything lined up exactly right, and then if you did have any seep out, you could pull it up. Uh, for the small one, I'm doing the same thing, just around the edges and the center of the body. And in this case, I didn't even use the tweezers, I just used the wings as a handle. <laughs> um, so that worked really well. And I, I just love them, they're beautiful. Now I want to add the bodies, that's going to add a, like a, a nice contrasting color here. And I'll just kind of lay them in place. And then I'm going to use a jewel picker and some more glue to glue them down. Um, I really do like that, that PVA glue in the fine line bottle. It's easy to, to control how much glue comes out. And the jewel picker is handy for small little pieces like that. It's also great for sequins and, and gems. So now that it's glued together, um, I want to figure out where to put my stamping before we actually assemble the whole card. So I'll grab my first sentiment. This one says, hello friend. And I want that to be on the shadow box panel there up between those butterflies. So I'm just gonna kind of lay it out and then I will grab my mini Misty. You could use a full size Misty too, um, but the mini Misty works fine for this because we're just on one half of the card there. And I will get it in place, make sure it's lined up, and then the grid on the front of the Misty is super handy to make sure that my, my words are parallel to the top and bottom of the card there. Now I use my powder tool and some Versamark ink, and I'm actually gonna stamp it a couple times. This is the first time that I used this stamp. Um, so kind of prime it the first time, and then also I was a little heavy handed with the powder tool, so make sure that I've got good ink coverage on there. I'm going to sprinkle on some white embossing powder and then I'll grab my heat gun, let it heat up for a second, and then I can melt that powder. And we've got our hello friend sentiment on the front. Now I want another little kind of a sub sentiment inside on that little card. I don't want it to be too big because that's where I'll write my, my message. Um, so I grabbed this small little one. It says, you are loved, which I think is super sweet and it fits right next to that butterfly nicely. So I went ahead and got it all lined up. I'm going to emboss this as well, but instead of, um, white, I'm going to actually stamp with pink and I believe that's picked raspberry ink there. And I'll stamp it a couple times again. This is the first time I was stamping it and I'm using a new um, powder bag so a lot of powder comes out at a time so was, I've been um, double or triple stamping from time to time now um, and I've switched over here to clear embossing powder you see the clear spoon um, I have a little two drawer unit that's a trick I picked up from Mary Polanco um, I have my two most used colors the white and the clear right there handy and I have color code coordinating spoons in there and I also do have labels on the front of the little drawers which is hard to see from above but I can see it when I'm working um, so that that's really simple for me to grab my embossing powder and go okay so everything's embossed I'll start gluing things together you saw me glue the little panel inside on the right side I'm also going to glue down that single butterfly and just kind of push it down. Again, I do like the wet glue. You do have to, to hold it for a second to get it to set, but I like the wiggle room that you get. And I believe that 
I find that the wet glue gives you a more permanent adhesion. I, I have had some of my tape runners fail over time, so I tend to be a wet glue person. Um, now I'm going to glue in the big one. You saw me flip it over and kind of take a look to see where my butterflies were hanging off the edges. I don't need to add glue there. Um, so I, I kind of just kind of eyeballed that. And uh, again, I'll just kind of look at it from the front and the back. I want to make sure that I'm not covering up that sentiment. And then I can kind of glue them in place. Just smash them down. <laughs> um, and I'm also going to flip it over. If I had any glue that came out the sides, which I did there at the bottom a little bit, I'll wipe it away so that I don't accidentally glue the card shut and then the fun fold won't open. That won't be any fun. Then I can pop up those butterflies again and look at how beautiful this card is. We're almost done. I just want to add a couple shimmery details. So I've got some of these gems from HAI. They are beautiful. They have great dimension. And then I grabbed a shimmer pen and I'm just going to go ahead and add that to the colorful part of each butterfly. And because those markers are water-based, I was kind of cleaning it off, cleaning off the shimmer pen in between because it can pick up water-based uh, color. But you can sort of see some of that color there. And you can see it all a little bit better here. I love how this card turned out. I think it's really pretty. And it looks... It looks really kind of complicated and hard, but you saw how fast and easy this comes together, right? It's even pretty from the back. <laughs> so remember that today's video is part of Janie's 20K hop, and there are lots of prizes. So make sure that you comment as you hop along with us um, and let us know if you are in the US or if you're abroad, because some prizes are only open um, to certain residents. If you are new to my channel and you like today's video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. If you click that bell, you won't miss any new videos from me. After you're finished hopping, come on back. I've got a few more videos to share. As always, my friend, thanks for watching.